I've been doing some pop punk stuff, some Midwest emo stuff. I think it's natural that I show you how to do some guitar tones and bass tones for some hot mulligan type of stuff. So let's do it. All right, so step one will be uh, get a guitar with some humbuckers. Here's a guitar. Humbucker. I'm going to use a variety of amp sims. I'm going to use Amplitude, and I'm going to use THU Slate, and I might use uh, Tone Hub, STL Tone Hub. So for a hot mulligan type tone, we're going to use a JCM, a JCM 800. Is that what it is? JCM 800? I don't know. It's the Brit 8000 uh, amp on Amplitude. I'm pretty sure it's like a JCM 800. I don't know. I don't really know my guitar amps. Uh, we're going to take that. We're going to go into low sensitivity. Otherwise, it sounds kind of gross. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. Low sensitivity, and then we're going to throw a tube screamer type of thing on there. There we go. I'm going to go for less overdrive, less tone. And then the chords we're going to be playing are going to be inversions. They're not going to be they're not going to be like standard minor chords like this. They're instead going to be an inversion that looks like this. So instead of something like this, it's going to sound like this. So let's just create some uh, some chorus. So I'm just going to duplicate that and play the same thing again. I'm going to jump into the amp and I'm just going to move a couple things around. I don't want the exact same amp sound for both. So instead, I'm going to switch to I'm going to switch to a similar amp but not the exact same thing. Now we're going to go into a different amp sim. I'm going to use THU Slate. Uh, I'm going to go into the iRig player, the American Classics, which I think you can, I think I bought that. So it's probably an add-on you can get. Um, I don't know what I want to use, probably something like this. I want a little more clean. Um, less gain. Yeah, that's nice. Turn it down quite a bit, and let's go. I'm going to play some different inversions now. Um, instead of this... I'm going to play like that. Same thing again. Then we're going to want one or two more, depending on how you want to do it. Um, sometimes I'll do a mono track and I'll just drown it in reverb. Sometimes I'll just do two tracks and put it in stereo and widen them. We want a clean sounding guitar, something like this. And I'm going to switch it to the... Uh, Second position. I'm going to turn it down so there's no break. There we go. Let's do some lead now. Now it sounds pretty dull right now. Uh, it's because we haven't even started mixing it yet. We still aren't going to mix it yet because we need to do bass. Let's grab the bass. All right, so for the bass, we're using a P bass. Um, I'm going to use a pick, too, because I just prefer the tone of a pick. So as for the bass, 100% of the time, I'm going to use Amplitude. It just sounds amazing. So first, we're going to go all the way to the solid state bass amp right here. Sounds good already. We want some uh, overdrive. So we're going to throw a bit of a tube screamer on there. Turn it down quite a bit. Get that overdrive down. Already sounds good. We're going to go into the bass amp. I'm going to take the middles out. Uh, treble, less of that, less middle. Perfect. Let's record. <laughs> All right, now we gotta turn everything down, make space for the drums. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna add some drums really quickly. I feel like this isn't complete without drums. This isn't a drum mixing tutorial, so I'm just gonna get them down and out of the way. All right, those are the drums. We'll worry about them later. I'm gonna group all the guitars. Uh, I'm gonna close the group, I'm gonna solo the group, and I'm gonna add an API Vision channel strip. Um, you can use a wave one. I don't know of any other ones. I know there's a waves one. No, you can use a waves one. It's the 
API 2500, I think. That might be the compressor. I don't really know my upboard gear. I'm pretty sure there's a Waves one, though. Let's look at the low end. Uh, let's do a high pass around 30. I don't think we need anything less than that. Uh, even 50 could work. Let's turn it on. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> I'm gonna go for 50. Let's go to our compression and we'll just do some light compression. I want a fast attack. Now we're gonna do a little bit of EQ. Uh, if you guys don't know how the API works, basically this blue thing right here selects the frequency. This white is the attenuation of the boost. Um, the boost of the cut. So let's add some highs. Uh, let's add 12.5k. That's our EQ. Uh, basically, we added the boost at 12.5, we added the boost at 8, and we added a Oh, actually, we didn't touch anything at 500. Uh, we added a cut at um, at 100. I, I like to add cuts at 100 because 100 is kind of the area where stuff sounds boxy, kind of boomy-ish. So, anyway, without this EQ, it sounds like this. And with it... Another thing I'll do often is I'll throw a compressor right before the amp sim on every single track. For this, I'm going to use the Pro C2. Um, it's not my favorite compressor, but you can do a lot with it. Let's get some of this going. that I'm gonna put it on every single guitar layer before the amps in. Cool. With that I want to add some a little more brightness. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna throw it into a Neve. Um I'm using the UAD stuff. There's a lot of different uh, varieties of these plugins, by the way. Uh, I used to use the Noise Ash, Need 73, Need, 80, Need 84. Need 84 is pretty good too. Um, and I still use it quite a bit, but uh, I'm gonna use the 1073 from UAD. There's also a Shep 73 from, from Waves. So you hear that, Rooster? <laughs> I'm doing a tiny, tiny bit of EQ on the Neve. Cool. And then after that, I'm going to throw a Renaissance Axe on there. It's just a super, super fast compressor. Make the attack virtually zero. Sounds good. Let's go to the bass. I'm going to throw a bass line on there. I just love it. I've always used it. It's amazing. A uh, bit of width. But it's important that you filter out the lows in the sides. So we're going to just grab a EQ. We're going to switch that to mid side. Mid's going to be fine. Side, we're going to cut all the way up. Then we're going to throw that through a pull tech. I'm going to use a UAD pull tech, but there is the analog obsession pull tech, which is free. There is the noise ash pull tech, which is very good. I've used those. They're, they're good. I just say this because UAD is super expensive and sometimes not worth it, honestly. You can get very good plugins for much cheaper, but these just, these just work. Let's go to 30. We'll boost and attenuate. We'll do a little pull tech trick. Mm -hmm. 
Sounds good. I'm just going to throw an LA-2A on there just to level it out a little bit. This will just make your bass um, less dynamic and fatter in a way. I try and shoot for 3 to 5 dB of uh, gain, of uh, gain reduction. I'm going to take a little bit more tone out of there. And then with the drums added in, we're just going to add a tiny bit of reverb and a bit of a room verb, which we will take from Valhalla Room. Mix that down. Less delay. <laughs> Now to stop the, the kick from uh, competing with the bass, sometimes I'll add a, a track spacer on the bass and I'll side chain that to the drums. And then I'll just put a high cut on. That way you'll hear the kick a bit more. There's a couple more mixing things to do more or less, uh, mainly focused around the drums, but this isn't that type of video. Um, I hope I got the, the gist across. I really do recommend messing around with channel strips uh, for the guitar wise. A lot of like pop punk records sort of stuff would take the guitars, put them through a Neve, put them through a, a Manly Poltec, um, put, them, put them through an API, any channel really, but uh, a lot of them like sub, get summed through a Neve. It adds that color, it adds that character. Whether or not you can hear it is just like a matter of time, really. Um, if you can't hear the difference between compressors and, and channel strips, I mean, still me neither to a, to a certain extent with like channel strips I haven't used. But it takes a lot of time to recognize compression, recognize types of compression, recognize channel strips. But yeah, that's pretty much the basics of a hot mulligan pop punk Midwestern emo sort of tone. I hope this was helpful.